You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Voted best of Pahrump for four years. Give them a call, 775-727-9900. News 25 is also brought to you by Gunny's Air Conditioning and Heating. New, service, and repair. Call Gunny's, 775-727-6800. Thank you for joining us here on News 25 and Ace Country Radio, streaming at kpvm.tv, and now on Roku devices on this Tuesday, May 7th. Good evening. I'm Chris Palermo, in for UNET, who has the evening off. Two people are hospitalized in critical condition following a shooting that occurred today. Just before 8 a.m., a shooting took place in a Walmart parking lot on East Tropicana and McLeod. The details of the incident nor the identities of the victims have been released at this time and News 25 will keep you updated as this story develops. Some other news now, one person is dead after an early morning fire in Las Vegas. RJ Camacho reports on this story. On May 6, the Clark County Fire Department were dispatched in response to a fire alarm signal originating from 3930 University Center. While en route, the firefighters were given an update that reported smoke coming from a hallway on the fifth floor. Upon arrival to the 10-story residential high-rise, crews started climbing the stairs to the fifth floor where the smoke was located. According to reports, after forcing open the door, crews found limited visibility and moderate heat in a residential unit. Crews promptly knocked down the fire and conducted a primary search of the area, locating one victim who they removed from the unit. The victim was transferred to a fire medical unit that was standing by. Another victim was able to flee down the hallway and was transported to the closest hospital for emergency medical treatment. Three dogs were removed from the building as well and are now with animal control. The first victim, which was found where the smoke was located, was reported to have succumbed to their injuries. The other suffered from moderate to severe burns, but is currently stable. The cause of the fire has yet to be determined and the estimated loss is reported to be at $200,000. And on April 26, a tractor trailer that was carrying hazardous waste caught fire in the Death Valley National Park. The truck's engine and brakes caught on fire while descending 5,000 vertical feet from Town Pass on California Highway 190. The fire happened near Milepost 83 between Emigrant Junction and Stovepipe Wells. The fire was extinguished thanks to park rangers, which prevented a potential release of waste into the park. The driver of the vehicle sustained non-life-threatening injuries. Park rangers transported the man to Desert View Hospital. This has been the third truck fire on Town Pass in the past year. And Las Vegas police are asking for the public's help in finding a wanted man accused of second-degree murder of his own daughter. It's been more than a year now since the man was last seen. Samantha Roberts has this story. More than a year later, Las Vegas Metro are still searching for the man responsible for the fatal crash which claimed the life of a 19-month-old infant. Freddy Escamilla Lopez, age 29, is wanted for charges of second-degree murder, reckless driving, child abuse, and neglect resulting in substantial bodily harm, and failure to stop at the scene of a crash involving death. The crash took place just after 11 p.m. on February 18th of 2023, near the intersection of Spanish Drive and Spanish View Lane. According to the arrest warrant, Escamilla Lopez intentionally oversteered his 2004 Nissan Titan in order to drift or fishtail from side to side while he was driving on Spanish Drive. This caused him to lose control of the vehicle and travel into oncoming traffic, hitting a wall just north of Spanish View Lane, injuring the two girls who were in the vehicle. The warrant states that Lopez was holding the 19-month-old victim in his lap, who was identified as Maya Escamilla. The impact of the crash allegedly caused Freddie's body to crush Maya's body against the steering wheel. Documents also stated that the 9-year-old victim, who was unlikely unrestrained, was sitting in the front seat of the vehicle during the crash. According to the 
warrant, a witness who lived nearby heard the collision and saw the pickup truck crash against the wall, saw Escamilla Lopez running toward him while holding the baby with the nine-year-old victim following him. The witness said Escamilla Lopez asked him to give him a ride to a nearby residence. When they arrived at the residence, Escamilla Lopez recognized his mother's vehicle that was driving toward them. After a brief fight, he gave both children to his mother before running away. According to the document, another witness told police she heard a woman, the mother, screaming outside shortly after the collision. The witness's son and daughter helped perform CPR on the unconscious baby until the fire department arrived. Paramedics then took both children to a nearby hospital. Maya succumbed to her critical injuries two weeks after the crash on March 2, 2023. Her cause of death was listed as blunt force injuries with the manner being accidental. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Freddie Escamilla Lopez, you are urged to contact Crime Stoppers at 702-385-5555. Information leading to his arrest may be eligible for a cash reward. Today is Fentanyl Awareness Day, and U.S. Senator Jackie Rosen from Nevada releases a video that highlights her efforts to combat the fentanyl crisis. Across our state, I've heard from families and from law enforcement officials about how the fentanyl crisis is putting Nevadans in danger and destroying our families. In Clark County alone, fentanyl overdoses increased by 97 percent between 2020 and 2023. And most of the illicit fentanyl that comes into our communities is smuggled across the border into the United States. That's why I've made it a priority to work across party lines to secure our border and stop the flow of fentanyl. Already this year, Republicans and Democrats have worked together to pass two bipartisan laws I've backed that will help fight fentanyl trafficking. My Bipartisan End Fentanyl Act requires U.S. Customs and Border Protection to use updated inspection guidance to better identify and crack down on fentanyl smuggling at our ports of entry. And the Bipartisan Fend-Off Fentanyl Act I co-sponsored requires the president to sanction international drug rings and, and declare the fentanyl crisis as a national emergency in order to free up additional resources to fight it. I've also voted in favor of billions of dollars in funding for our border law enforcement and to hire more CBP agents to stop this deadly drug from coming into our nation. And we are not done yet. On this National Fentanyl Awareness Day, know that I'll continue fighting every day to put a stop to the fentanyl crisis and make sure our communities and law enforcement have all of the support they need to keep Nevadans safe. More stories coming up. You're watching News 25. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Welcome back to News 25. I'm Chris Palermo in for Unit Gentry, who has the night off. As our military coverage continues to expand in Southern Nevada, Las Vegas correspondent Maria Centers now joins us from Nellis Air Force Base. As space is no longer a benign environment, we are now joined by U.S. Space Force Space Training and Readiness Commander Major General Timothy Sedgba with an inside look at the pivotal role Nellis Air Force Base plays in defending our nation and the world. Space today is a warfighting air environment and we're training guardians to make sure that we're prepared should deterrence fail to win conflicts in space. Living under the mantra of humble, approachable, and credible, Weapons officers and advanced instructors serve as trusted advisors and problem solvers while seamlessly aligning the U.S. Air Force's combat power alongside other military branches. The Space Weapons School was started here back in the early 2000s and has produced high-end space operators that have been critical to our space domain 
and certainly to our multi-domain fight. The weapons school is comprised of 21 weapons squadrons and eight advanced instructor courses at nine locations across the nation, while 13 squadrons are stationed right here at Nellis Air Force Base. The testing, the training, especially the advanced training and exercises that is done here at Nellis is certainly critical to not only the Air Force and the Space Force, but to many of our allies and certainly to the overall joint fight. Reporting right here from Nellis Air Force Base, I'm Maria Centers with News 25 Las Vegas. Thank you very much, Maria. Nellis Air Force Base is one of the largest employers in Clark County. John Ellison is running for Nevada State Senate, District 19. News 25 caught up with John at the America First MAGA Trump rally on April 27 to tell us all about his campaign. Hi, my name is John Ellison. I'm running for Nevada State Senate, District 19. I served the Nevada Dis Assembly District for 12 years and always had high marks as a conservative. Uh, I've been endorsed by most of the, the most important people of the state this year to run, including the governor, lieutenant governor, uh, uh, senators, assemblymen, all the way down. Uh, I'm proud to take the position on. I've always been a conservative and care about the people, and that's number one. I conserved about taxes, public lands, water, and uh, districts that's being attached by the federal government. I also spent three years of my life back and forth to get PILT, payment in lieu of taxes, to get the funding back to each county in the state of Nevada and part of the United States. So I've been involved all my entire life trying to help as a county commissioner for 10 years and a sim state uh, assemblyman for 12 years and also a city councilman for 10 years. I've been conservative and I fought the fight. I've got the only person running this race that actually has got a record in being in public office. A lot of these people don't, and that's what we gotta be careful for. If we lose two seats this year, we could have a real problem because we will lose the veto power. You gotta get out and vote and look for who you're voting for. It's one of the most important things we can do this year, and we gotta stand behind Trump. So of those that are out there, my, uh, my name's on the uh, register, you have all my phone numbers, address, and we have an open door office, and my phone runs 24 seven, so please call. We have one website, it's, it's john at ellisonelco.com. My phone number is 775-934-6611. We have an open door policy and we're open to the public. Thank you. Twenty twenty four, Donald Trump. And early voting location and times for the June primary have been released. The schedule of early voting for June 11, 2024 primary election has been released. Registered voters for all precincts throughout Nye County may drop off mail ballots or vote in person at the Bob Rood Community Center, 150 North Highway 160, Perump, and at the Nye County Clerk's Office, 101 Radar Road, Tonopah. Special early voting for seniors will be held at the Tonopah Senior Center and the Perump Senior Center. For further information, please contact Nye County Clerk's Office at 775-482-8127 in Tonopah or 775-751-7040 in Perump. For more information, visit nycountynv.gov. More news now. The Prump Regional Planning Commission has two vacancies up for grabs. Mikey Rohan has the details. There are two vacancies on the Pahrump Regional Planning Commission, which also sits as the Capital Improvements Advisory Committee for the Pahrump Regional Planning District. One vacancy is for an unexpired term to end June 2026, and one vacancy is for an expired term to end June 2028. Applicants must live within the Pahrump Regional Planning District. Nye County Commissioners are requesting applications completed questionnaires from persons interested in filling these vacancies. An application and questionnaire are available at nycountynv.gov. And coming up, Valley Electric Association has some great advice. News 25 continues in a bit. You're watching News 25, local coverage you can count on.
Welcome back to News 25. In today's VEA segment, clearing power lines of tree branches and debris deliver dependable and reliable electricity to its communities while safely discarding natural materials. This segment of News 25 is brought to you by Valley Electric and its family of companies focused on serving our members. We're better together. Clear power lines deliver dependable electricity to our communities. Rights of way, which are the paths that the power lines take, often go through wooded areas and areas with other vegetation. Keeping those clear is vital to improve the reliability for our cooperatives and members. Cooperative employees work hard to keep lines clear for all consumers in both public and private spaces. By clearing tree branches, removing problematic debris, and safely discarding natural materials to ensure reliable electricity for our member owners. In sports, well, okay, the home team and the NHL, that's just about do it with the Vegas Golden Knights. But Mikey has your look at sports and there's plenty more going on in town. Time now for your News 25 look at sports and streaming at kpvm.tv. And now on Roku devices, Las Vegas Aviators are in Round Rock, Texas right now, taking on the Express. The game was tied at three. We'll keep you posted on that score. Ajay Wilson announced today that she signed an endorsement deal with Gatorade. Congratulations. And World Wrestling Entertainment announced via X that WrestleMania 41 will be taking over Allegiant Stadium in the Las Vegas Valley for two nights on April 19th and April 20th, 2025. In addition to the two-night stadium event, WWE will bring Raw, SmackDown, NXT Stand and Deliver, WWE World, and the 2025 WWE Hall of Fame ceremony to Las Vegas. I went to WrestleMania 3. Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan. Prim Valley Trojan Varsity Baseball is heading to Modern East Academy. That game is in progress as part of Day 2 for their regional playoffs. And Prim Valley Trojan Softball is in Virgin Valley today for their second playoff game. That game is also in progress. And that's your look at sports on News 25. And would you look at the guns on Mikey? Update to that Aviators score. Well, they lost to the Round Rock Express 6-4. to four. And the Sam Gennaro Feast starts tomorrow at the M Resort in Las Vegas. And News 25 is giving away free tickets starting today. Here's how you can get your free passes to this fun event. The 44th Annual San Gennaro Feast, an Italian and international food and wine festival, will be at the M Resort in Las Vegas from Wednesday, May 8th through Sunday, May 12th. We have 40 free adult VIP passes at a $15 value we're giving away here in Pahrump to some lucky listeners and viewers today. You must be able to collect the passes physically from our station during normal business hours, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily, no later than Friday at 4 p.m. There is a limit of two passes per caller, and they will be awarded in the order calls or voicemails are received. Get them before they're gone. Call 775-727-9400 now. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All right, the Lerner and Row Weather Cam, and that is beautiful Mount Charleston. And, well, the weather is looking like it could be a nice weekend for the Feast Complete forecast coming up in just a bit. News 25 weather is brought to you by the committee to elect Robert E. Thomas for Pahrump Justice of the Peace, courtroom B. Vote for constitutional judge Robert E. Thomas. Visit www.electrt.com for more information. Good evening and 
Nevada, I'm Rory Rosell here from the Channel 25 Weather Studios and streaming everywhere at kpvm.tv and now Roku. Taking a look at Nevada right now, up in northern Nevada, Fernley is at 60 degrees, Fallon at 62, Carson City at 64, Tonopah at 70 degrees, Goldfield at 65, Beatty at 80 degrees, Amargosa at 86, Las Vegas at 84, and Death Valley at 95 degrees. Here in the Paradise and Pahrumpa is currently 82 degrees, the high today just a little while ago was 84 degrees. The wind is going to be blowing today northwest at 11 miles per hour humidity 9%. It was sunny today and the sun rose this morning at 5:44 a.m. and is going to set at 7:37 p.m. tonight. The humidity does rise up to 14% today. The wind is going to be blowing north northeast at 14 miles per hour tonight. 53% is the low tonight with clear skies. Let's take a look at the rest of the week. It looks like there's going to be partly cloudy skies all the way into next week, though Wednesday is going to be a sunny day. There's a little bit of wind throughout all of next week and this week. We're going from the 70s to the 80s and 90s up to 91 on Monday and Tuesday. I hope you all are excited for the nice weather that is coming to us this next week. Back to the desk, here's Chris. Thank you very much, Miss Roselle. It looks pretty good, a little bit of wind, but the weekend looks good. That'll do it for us. I'm Chris Palermo in for Unet News 25. Make it a great night.